I'm talking about straining for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Yes, because sir. we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see yes, and everybody you can't that we've talked about. I'm here to strain with you, man. I swear to God I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain Ooh, with everything you got. Let's go. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show with your host, Joe Miller. Well, what is going on, everybody? Welcome. Welcome, everybody, into the Off Tackle with John Fina Show, brought to you by the Market Dominator team on the Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network, presented by Picasso's Pizza. Treat yourself to the most flavorful pizza on game day. Picasso's, we are Buffalo Pizza, shipping local nationwide. Uh, Order online at picassospizza.net. My name is Joe Miller. I'm the host of this year's wonderful show. You can find me on Twitter at Joe Miller Wired, and that guy sitting right over there getting ready to crack his beer. Is is John Fina? John, Mister Fina, are you are you uh, coming down off of or coming up or whatever? Are you getting? I don't even know what the word is. How are you feeling? It's been a it's been a dreadful weekend. It has been a dreadful weekend. I would somewhat agree with that. My high school team lost on Thursday night. My and UCLA lost to my alma mater. And I'm torn, right? Uh, and then my <laughs> Buffalo Bills lose, and th- there's like an angst. Mm. I'm just, yeah. So I'm hoping that the Albuquerque Bills backers t shirt is the key to success this week. I like it. And if you haven't, if you have a trip planned to Albuquerque during the season, you definitely got to connect with them. They're awesome. Great well, people. Well, welcome everybody uh, into the show, into the Off Tackle with John Fita show on Buffalo Rumblings. A uh, whole bunch of people in the comments section already. Remember everybody to like and subscribe, whatever platform you are tuned into, uh, whether uh, live right now or in podcast form during the week. Uh, you can also super chat Big John, ask him a question, make a comment, whatever you want to do, get our attention. But uh, panel is in the chat. What Tracy Victor's in the chat. Uh, Daniel Gowries. Oh, Pat Moran is in the chat. He already says, Ooh. I want to hear from John if he thinks that Dorsey lacks confidence. We'll get back to this. So we're going to come Ooh. back to that question from Pat Moran. Uh, Karen Idzik is in the room. Jason Humbert's in the room. Mark Johnson's in the room. The uh, What's the word? The uh, the uh, creator of Fina Friday and the JF70 t-shirt. What? John Hello. Fina's in the room. Hello. I look, am. How, look at how blue your eyes are in that picture. It's got to be oh the shirt, God. right? Is it the it, shirt? It is. It definitely is. It's very <laughs> chameleon-esque. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. It is so good to have you. Before we get uh, started, let's hear from the show's title sponsor, the one, the only, Jonathan Spazcheck. Strategy. Strategy. Block, block, vision. Get your vision up. Balance. Foot back. Head up. Yeah, these are some of the strategies my good friend John Fina used to dominate on the field when he was playing for our great Buffalo football team. And these are some of the things that I use in real estate to dominate as the market dominator and also the proud sponsor of the John Fina Show hosted by Joe Miller. So if you want to win in the real estate market, It's going to be important to bring good vision so you can see what's out there. Good balance of the market. Folks, strategy is critical, and this is what we do. We educate, we advocate, we negotiate, and we dominate. So if you want to win the way our football team is, you call me directly, 716-570-3298. Let's go, Buffalo! Ladies and gentlemen, that is John Spazcheck. And uh, according to our graphic that I created and still have not fixed, they actually adopt Kate. Hmm. <laughs> In case anybody's wondering, look it's, that up. It's a, it's it's a so, French word. So few people can do that well. <laughs> adopt Kate? You, you got to find somebody Adobe that can adopt Kate for you. Yes, because it's, 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 a, it's really important yeah. when you're buying a house. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you're in the market to buy or sell a home, whether you are in Western New York, New York State, or anywhere in the country, please give John a call. You can reach him at 716-570-3298, 716-570-3298. So before we jump into the show, we're, we're going we're gonna to let 
we're going to let Pat Moran feel special and we're going to get to his question before we talk about anything. So J Pat asks you, hopefully he's still in the comment section. hasn't run off. I want to hear from John. If he thinks on, if he thinks the door that Dorsey lacks confidence in the offensive line, when it comes to his run blocking or comes to their run blocking in the second half of game. So I'm guessing from a, your perspective or from what you've seen, do you think that there's issues with confidence in the O-line in the second half? No, I, I don't think it's confidence. Uh, and I did torture myself by watching the second half again, right? I watched the whole damn game. And I thought it was really curious. Like, we played uh, the last few minutes of the third quarter and the fourth quarter like we were losing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Dorsey lacks confidence, but I, I do have some great thoughts about the offensive line play, the running right. game. But what I think was kind of peculiar was – he went away from the type of running that we normally do, and we ran a couple of draw plays, which right. just died, uh, which just killed me. I'm like, why are we running draw? He did a little bit of what we want to say, uh, either A, got too cute, or wanted to out outsmart everybody else. And I just, I normally don't criticize play selection right because it's right, easy right. to say the play selection was bad when things all of a sudden aren't going well right. but in this instance i just i'm i'm third and two i want to go forward you know i i would rather put meat on meat and push mm. than uh try to dissect and hope for holes which is what the draw looks like so uh, i don't think it's a lack of confidence i think it was just some poor decision making from him the, uh, the most comical thing that uh, I saw, heard, or whatever, read about this football game actually was on Good Morning Football. Uh, Garofolo made the comment that the reason the Buffalo Bills are struggling in the second half of games is because they traded away their power back. They don't have a power back in Zach Moss anymore. And I was just like, tell me that you don't watch Buffalo Bills games without telling me that you don't watch Buffalo Bills games because Zach was not used ever as a power back uh the bills never have really had a power run game in the last three or four years so yeah that was just silliness so if anybody out here heard that and you think yeah that's right they got rid of their power back yeah that's not at all what happened so yeah that that's bad i mean to be fair there are at this time of the year what uh 13 games on sunday and you can't watch them all when right, five right. of them are being played at the same time so I'll forgive you, but, you know, trying to come up with a quippy little original idea, maybe research it a little bit somehow. I mean, I don't know how you would. You'd have to devour a lot of film. I don't know who keeps that stat, but that's just dumb. I, I spent years of my life, 17 of them to be exact, during the drought years, never hearing good things about the Buffalo Bills, probably with good reason. And if there was a highlight or, you know, a recap of a game, we got the 32nd spot, right? Or the 22nd spot. Oh, and the Bills played the Redskins and the blah, 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 blah. They lost, yada, yada, yada. And there was mm -hmm. never anything good. Even when the Bills played good and they beat the Patriots or if they beat another good team, we still got the 32nd like highlight reel and there was nothing to it. What's yeah. weird to me and what I've learned is what you just said. These guys don't have the time to watch all these football games. They don't know what they're talking about. And they heap praises on guys that are supposed to be have praises heaped upon them. And they talk down about guys that are supposed to be talked down about. And, and that, Go ahead. Sorry. It, you're fine. And there's no better example than the Green Bay game. The Bills beat the Green Bay Packers. And if you go back or find us some way to watch a highlight film from GMFB or one of these other things, they go through the highlights. And we all know, us Bills fans, that Josh did not play well in that game at all. And meanwhile, it's like Josh was outstanding against the Green Bay Packers last night. And it's like, uh, because that's <laughs> well, what they're supposed to say, because he's well, the MVP favorite, right? Right, right. And then the a bigger problem is, you know, all these guys are still like they're, they're, holding on to their popularity, their following, their influence. Right. So right. they feel compelled to throw ideas out there that they think are original thoughts that are completely useless. Like right. every, everybody's just afraid to shut up. <laughs> God, can we get some air in here? 
<laughs> here I am talking and you're talking. You're like wow. I wasn't talking when you said that. I, I, I I'll just let you talk the rest the of throw up in my mouth. <laughs> I think I, I think I'm getting the hint. You're asking you're, me. No, to no, I'm just talking. saying. I'm saying we're 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 two of the mouthpieces in the world, and we're criticizing the mouthpieces of the world. Yeah, but I think that we try to bring some levity. I think we try to bring some reality. I think we try to ground some of the conversation and some of the takes. When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. And when it's you know okay, it's okay. And we're gonna talk about a lot of that in this show as promised last week two things we promised that we would be bringing the breakdowns back which we are this week we also promised that drew bledsoe would be with us tonight which he is not oh drew bledsoe had to reschedule so we are going we are working on rescheduling drew bledsoe he will be joining us soon this would have been the game though to have john randall on with us but that didn't work out either so it is, no, it is. well actually kind of not like it was bad enough to watch the game and then <laughs> you're all chipper because you had your cathartic release last night you know with your microphone and your cool voice and everything and mean, <laughs> meanwhile i've been pulling my hair out since like 7 a.m uh, going, why the hell didn't we kick the field goal and so many other knock things. and knock it down uh we, I, we can... oh punch it out just punch it out you know what's curious is in re-watching the game remember stefan diggs the ball was tipped he tried to make a play on it yeah, and yeah, yeah. the defender was coming in if you look at it he made no effort to try to re-catch the ball when the defender had it he went for the knockdown yeah for sure and, and we can jump into our thoughts on this football game but there were so many opportunities uh and we'll obviously we can talk about the the the, the... there's a lot of people that want to blame josh there's a lot mm -hmm. of people i'm not even gonna say there's a lot of people that want to blame other things it seems like everybody wants to blame josh mm -hmm. to me it's josh to me it's the defense to me it's coaching uh to me it's i mean we're, we're talking about Josh Allen, who had three turnovers in this football game. And if somebody in the defensive huddle or if somebody somewhere has a conversation with Cam Lewis and says, bro, it's everybody, not just Cam, it's fourth and 18, knock the ball down, which is a problem we had last year, if you remember. That was, or was it two years ago, 20 or 21, we had the problem where somebody, oh, it was the Hale Murray, where they went up and tried to catch the ball instead of just swatting it away. Cam goes up and he's upset with himself. And I don't know if you saw his post game press conference, but he was very, very dejected. And there was a lot of curse words, a lot of expletives, but because he, he realized he, if he just swats that ball away, you don't want to catch it anyway. It's fourth and 18. You catch it. It makes the situation yeah, worse. Worse. Right. But if, he think... knocks, if he knocks that ball away, we're having a conversation about how five foot 10, five foot 11 Cam Lewis out jumps Justin Jefferson to knock the ball away and save the game. Josh doesn't fumble the ball. Josh doesn't throw a second interception. It's a completely different narrative for the entire game. You, you want to think that at this level of play that players have situational awareness. And, you know, it, it comes down to a little bit like a reactive situational awareness from baseball, right? There's a mm -hmm. guy in second. There's two outs. You say in your mind, the ball coming to me and you're an infielder, I'm going to first. Right. I mean, you got you have to think, like, what's the worst thing that can happen? What's the best thing that can happen? How do I prevent the worst thing? And you want to think that the guys are equipped like that. You can't, from the sideline, be screaming, hey, in the event of a jump ball, don't try to catch it. You got to knock it. You know, there's, right. there's, there's 90 different reminders. Sure. And, you know, to my credit, and I'll boast a little bit here, I coached my sons in that way, even though they're offensive linemen, and it seems meaningless to a lot of people listening. You know, what's the down and distance? You know, what is the – how's that guy lining up on you? What's his what's his body habitus look like? You know, uh, and, and you really have to pay attention to that stuff. So, I mean, I feel bad for him. He's a young guy, right? I mean, yeah, he's but, yeah. You from UB? He actually played at UB. He hangs around town. Obviously, he's, I think he married a, a a woman from Buffalo. He he's a good guy. I've met him several times. He's a great he's a great kid. And I yeah, you know, he, and, sa he, and sadly, he's going to learn from that event. Yeah, and he's right? a and he's a cornerback. That was his first time starting at safety. And by and large, I thought he played okay. There's some chatter out there on Twitter that he had a not great game, but it's like. It was better than Jaquan Johnson the week before. Yeah, he played okay. Yeah, he played okay yeah. as far as that goes. But uh, overall thoughts, I'm going to let you go first. Overall thoughts just on this game, just in general. Well, I think the the, the coaching really failed us. Um, you know, I, I went back and I looked at the long run by Dalvin Cook. Oh, here's the good. Here's the upside. If James Cook has any Dalvin Cook in him, we're looking pretty good because right. uh, that guy is a baller. 
All right. That's, that's huge. I really think that the coaching kind of failed us. Um, particularly Ken Dorsey. And I don't mean that as fire the guy. I just mean, Ken, you know, you got to be a little better than this. Mm -hmm. The play calling down the stretch, calling screens. We're not a screen team calling draws in short yarded situations where, you know, you're, you're giving the ball to a guy who's seven yards behind the line of scrimmage with no momentum. Right. You know, we, we, when we had them in nickel and I'm shouting cause I'm, a, I'm very emotional when we had them in nickel <laughs> um, and we were in a regular set without bunches outside the tackles, we ran the ball effectively. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what do I mean by that? You know, the defense is going to get a couple of, you know, no gains, the occasional tackle for a loss, but by and large, Devin Singletary and James Cook carried the ball beyond the line of scrimmage very effectively in the first two yeah. and part of the three qu third quarter of the game. Right. And then you go to a draw and then my God, I have total post-traumatic stress disorder from a screen in the red zone when LaVon Kirkland in Pittsburgh intercepts it and ran 149 yards for a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's too compressed. Don't be cute. Go forward. Do what you're good at. Make them stop what you're best at. Right. So, you know, I, I really think the, the going forward on fourth and two really deflated them. And then it changed the thought process of now we're playing from behind, even though we're up by 10 and we're going to start running plays that we probably rep once live in practice and live in practice is 50% tempo. Right. Right. So that's just, that's poor. Right. We got our first super chat from Devin. Devin, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Appreciate you. I feel offensive miscues have played this team all season, but have been covered up by wins. Your thoughts on playoff struggles with these miscues. Can I go first? It's my show, so thank you for asking. The answer is yes, you may. <laughs> you may, son. So I was talking with Jerry Ostrowski actually today. We were just kind of just talking about this. He was asking me another question, and it just were kind of like rolled into the game itself. And it seems to me that there's a lot of, yes, misexecution, poor execution, uncertainty, maybe not confusion. is Confusion is the wrong term, but it seems like there's a trepidation. There's, there's a measure of maybe, I don't want to say guessing, but the, the same fluidity that was there last year is not there this year, at least from what I feel like I'm seeing. And I attribute that, and I feel like, and you can answer this better, and I said the same thing to Jerry, you've been a part of several different offensive right schemes, some that have built upon each other, some completely brand new. I feel like that as much as this is Dable's offense, Dorsey is wanting to do some things the Dorsey way. And it just feels like the team hasn't, kind of found its rhythm or its groove or settled into that yet. And part of that comes from Stefan Diggs yesterday in his post-game press conference. He said two things. He said, it seems like we come out hot and then we kind of get into a lull and we get out of the groove and we got to find a way to stay in the groove. He said, we don't have a problem necessarily getting back in the groove. He goes, we just need to not ever leave the groove. We need to stay in the groove. And then they also asked him a question about just the plays that were being called. And he did not throw anybody under the bus, but he did say, we've got to find a way to execute the plays that are called for us, which to me tells me that there might be a little bit of struggle in some of the plays that are being called, the design, the scheme, the flow of the game. They really haven't, there's just not a real good feel for what Dorsey's trying to accomplish versus what Dave Dable is trying to accomplish. Now, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, to address the actual question, if you'll put it back up there, sure. the, you know, all of our foibles are covered by wins. I mean, Kirk yeah. Cousins had two picks that are now oh, covered he, by, he played by a W. He did not you know, he, he gets stepped on by his center, not just once, but twice. And if anybody's curious, that's a quarterbacking problem. Right, right. And it is not an, an off, it's not a center problem. Said like a true lineman. <laughs> well, I'm teasing you. I'm teasing yeah. you. <laughs> well, I, I take it as a compliment. So... <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'd rather be an offensive lineman than anything else, frankly. Uh, thoughts on the playoff struggles and these miscues. Well, well they, look, be out early. That's the thought. What's that? What's they'll, that? They'll be out early if they have, these miscues continue. Well, yeah, no kidding. I, but I'll tell you this too. I mean, I can't break down every running play. I mean, I'd love to. Maybe that's next time I come to Buffalo. We'll do a running camp. You know, and we'll have like. You know, 50 of the wonderful Bills Mafia come. We'll get the all 22. 
we'll raise money for charity and we'll dissect plays. Everybody brings a play because I could tell you right now that the straightforward running plays that we ran for Singletary and Cook were very effective. When we had problems, we were doing some pin and pull stuff against a very, very good defensive front four. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was, I don't want to say it was getting too cute because I'm okay with a no gain every now and again. Yeah, for sure. But when you have a no gain and you just have a complete mistake uh, by your offensive lineman, that, that's a function of we're not getting enough full speed reps on this. We're not getting enough buy in during the game. Stick with the zone. I, I love that they run the zone effectively, and then they run the tackle pull across the line. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm sure somebody has a name for it. Or you run the zone with the tight end going back across the line and, and doing the kick out. I think we should stick to those couple of plays. Yeah. But a couple other things that pop out to me about the running game, I would rather throw on first and 10 at this, at this point in time and run on second down. Uh, we, were, we, we ran pretty well in second down, and in – also, I think Minnesota struggled with do we stay in regular and do we stay in nickel? Because when they went to nickel, we exposed them with the run. So we got to do something to get them into a nickel defense, not just Minnesota, but whomever we're playing. We got to get them into a nickel, and then we have to run against the nickel in a very straightforward way and just say, we are going to lean on your guys long enough mm. for our five foot four running back to find a seam and get us four yards right and 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 fall down for two more because honestly when when the when it was tight that's all we wanted from thurman thomas get to four fall for two more right and and you got a good running game right all all the flash aside um and then I'm, I'm going to throw it out on the other uh, conversely right you're screaming for regular in our defense and I'm coming to believe that we need to figure out how to strategically play some regular defense because on that long touchdown run, although Benford missed the tackle and he should have made it, if you look at the way they lined up, they forced us to have everybody strong with uh, Dodson in the middle, mm -hmm. Milano strong, and then it was just a pick and choose who the receiver was going to block and then, and have Dalvin Cook make one guy miss. Yeah. So I just, yeah, it's hard. It was a, it was a beautiful play, and it's one of one of my favorite formations uh, that I wish that we ran more. We don't have the tight ends for it, but I love just evening them up and saying we're coming at you. We're going to see who's better in yeah. the run game. For this for this game, getting back to just where the blame is going to be is going to be laid, for lack of a better term. You know, I'm the guy that says it. I've said it on this show. I said it on my show last night. I say it all the time. Quarterbacks throw interceptions. Running backs fumble. Wide receivers drop passes. Quarterbacks are going to throw interceptions. Um, you know, I, I just put a tweet out a little while ago that I don't feel like the decision that Josh made at the end of the game was bad. Uh, Gabe Davis was open. Uh, Josh was a little bit late with the throw, and he underthrew it. And we don't know necessarily how, what, why. I'm sure the double hitch didn't help him. If you're looking to find out what I'm talking about, just look for my Twitter account while you're listening, and you'll see that post there. But at the end of the day, quarterbacks are going to make mistakes. Running backs, Devin Singletary is going to fumble. And the defense has to pick the team up at times. And there's been a lot of chatter for me thought on this game or there's been a lot of chatter i've heard i should say not from me but there's been a lot of chatter about this game that this was all josh's fault the defense did enough and it's like the vikings scored 33 points are we really talking about the fact that like the defense did enough in the second half they stopped him twice at the beginning of the, of the half or once at the beginning of the half and that was it other than one time where they stopped him on their own one yard line mm -hmm. there wasn't a whole lot of stopping going on <laughs> even no, though I, I, they let I, him down to kick a field goal Look, so, I, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. Let, and let me address the defensive portion of it. Yeah. I think I think we're missing our two safeties more than anything oh, else. Sure. I, I don't think that the corners are playing poorly. I think they're playing adequately. But the difference is uh, it's Hamlin back there, right? Yeah. And Demar I yeah. think he's playing great. He however, is, yeah. however, what he's missing is you cannot cure because what he needs is time and experience mm -hmm. to know when to be aggressive. I don't feel like we're supporting quickly enough on the throws. Right. And I think that is the difference. I think with uh Hayden Poyer, I think a, a, at least three of those throws get broken up or challenged even better than they were. Yeah. And uh, honestly, I mean, other than the long run, I like the performance of the front six. I thought it wasn't terrible. Um, there were a few long runs that I would have liked to have back, but 
you're right. I mean, you got to hand. I, I think in the in the long run, I look at at the coaching, the play yes. calling from Dorsey. Yes. Uh, I think McDermott's got to kick the field goal. I think yes. that changes the landscape of the game immeasurably. Yes. But then Dorsey has to, even if we go for it on fourth and two and you miss it, don't play like you're grasping at straws. Now I'm going to run a draw. Now I'm going to run a screen on the six yard line. You know, now I'm going to do all this fancy stuff. Third and two, run forward. Don't wait and, and look for it to separate. I agree. Right. The defense, though, we're not getting the big stop. And I'm look, I'm not blaming those guys. They just don't have the things that come later with time and experience and yeah there's a there's a building upon right. what you're doing there's a building upon those defensive flows there's a building upon that momentum and it just see like i i had in my notes i talked about it briefly on the show yesterday just that you know big plays happen we had some people come through at a big moment with a couple big sacks and it was fourth and 18 and they gave up a big pass for a first yeah time. right i totally moment. agree man and, and it's crazy to think that that it's true that Tremaine Edmonds matters yes. in the middle of the field. Big time. And, you know, when he came out, I was like, I, I tried to look on the film today. Did I see him, like, come up and grab his groin? He did. I didn't, I didn't just say that out loud, loud, did I? <laughs> yeah, he, he went. So I remember it specifically because I watched the play. In the third quarter. There. Yeah, he right? so he went down. He went down kind of a mass of a couple other bodies, and he got to his hands and knees and kind of sat there mm. for a second. And I was like, rut row. And then he jumped up. Somebody tried to help him up, but he, he jumped up and then kind of he didn't super super limp right. up, but it wasn't. Right. I did see that, and I kept thinking, okay, well, when you know that's a that's a tough one because yeah. you know your groin is when you think you're recovering from it, you know, you never really test it like you test it in a game, right? And and it's one of those things that also is in the back of your mind when you're gonna make a uh, an athletic move. Am I going to change the way I would naturally do this because I'm afraid I'm going to pop that little groin muscle? You know, tiny little muscle, but a little bit debilitating, right? Yeah, for sure. We got our, we got on the super chat uh, from Pamela, our good friend Pam. Love Dorsey's fire, but could he be too aggressive for Josh? Felt Dable held Josh's talent back, which was good for Josh's wildness sometimes, but maybe Dorsey is too aggressive. Find a happy mm. medium. No, but here, here's where I go back. I, I love the comment, Pam, and thank you very much uh, for posting that. What I think is Dorsey, how do I explain this? There's always been and ever will be a disconnect from the guys on the field and the guys in the booth. Mm. You know, you can look at a game plan and think, you know, if we got in a paper fight, we'd win. We're just going to throw our game plan at them harder than they throw theirs at us. Right. And then as the game's developing, you start to lose this focus of my quarterback the week before was struggling with confidence issues. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a struggle there. So McDermott, why put him in a position on fourth and two? Why not just take the points? Right. Dorsey. Why am I going to put him in a position? And by the way, the screen to the right was open and Josh grounded it when he should have joshed it and just, you know, he jumps five inches in the air and he has his arm at the top. It's like 14 feet in the air and he could have lobbed it. It was wide open, right. but it's not a play you run all the time. Why are you running it? Mm, so it's not a, it's not a function of is Dorsey too aggressive? It's like, just focus on what we do best. Like, quit making shit up. Like, you got the grease board and the pen in the booth, and you're like, well, uh, Joe Miller's the bottle cap. Joe Marino is the string. Pam Adana is the right, caterpillar. Exactly. Right? exactly. And that, that to me, I looked at that, and I was like, where in the Sam Hill did that come from? Right, right. Well, we got to move on. We got to let's let's run to the good in this football game. But before we do, I had the opportunity, uh, dare I say, the luxury, the pleasure to sit in the booth uh, of one of our show sponsors, House Capital. Brian Belser uh, hosted both me and my mom, and uh, we had a really good time. Super, super thankful. So, yeah, why don't you tell the folks about House Capital? Yeah, it was fun. And they're good people in that. Booth. They are good they're people yes. in that luxury box. <laughs> so luxurious. <laughs> hey, when you're looking to buy a house, everybody's got a guy. You might need work done on your roof. Your buddy, hell yeah, he's got a guy. If you need an inspection, I mean, even I know someone. And when you're looking to get your financing together, Brian Belser from House Capital can, Corporation could can be your guy. They help make the mortgage process simple, hassle-free, and understandable. At House Capital, their preferred relationships with some of the top lenders 
gives you the edge up in getting the financing you need. Take it to the house with House Capital and Brian Belser. Super great guy. Get your financing together. Give Brian a call. I believe his cell phone is the number that's on the screen. 716-815-2102. 716-815-2102. We are going to jump over and we are going to talk about the good from this game. And uh, I'm going to let you go first, sir, because this is, as you said, this is your show. Oof. The good. I thought there was um, a lot of good. Yeah, there was a lot of good. I I, I, I want to know why we don't see Naheem Hines more, because he was good. Mm-hmm. I like him. I like him a lot. Um, uh, What else was good? Uh, Basic formation, run, zone blocking, productivity. Good. Let's see more of it. Yeah. Uh, If you run on first down or you throw on first down and you can get them in nickel on second down, then you can run or pass. Play action. I wrote in my notes, which are way over there. Play action works. (laughs) Play action works if you actually have running plays. Um, I'll tell you another thing. I really felt like even though Groot was down, the defensive front four was super aggressive. Right. Getting getting close, getting close, getting close. And, uh, you know, it didn't maybe matter in the end. We got a couple, three sacks. I can't remember what it was, but they look strong. They look strong. Uh, even though we don't love it, Dodson getting more experience is good for us. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Josh's elbow seems okay. Agreed. Uh, despite the underthrow and maybe one other throw that I saw. Um, uh, so that's my good, man. Let me go get my notes. You go ahead. I'm listening. Well, hang on. There's a, there's a super chat, so don't ju- jump away. But there was it, there was there was a couple shots in the in the in during the game in my rewatch. Again, I was there, so I didn't get to see it live where underneath his white sleeve, it looked like he had some sort of a brace on his right arm, which throwing in, being a Buffalo kid, growing up throwing in a snowsuit was never easy. So I can't imagine whatever he had on, on his arm underneath all of his pads probably restricted him a little bit. But uh, Bryce Erdwin uh, with the Super Chat says, too many turnovers, but JA17 looked comfortable with his elbow. Brings comfort just to have uh, to square away the Brings comfort just to have to square away the loose ends. Um, I agree. Maybe you don't need to stick around I, for that one. No, I, I think it's hard to think that he's wearing a brace, but maybe a neoprene sleeve, something to keep it warm. It looked like there was yeah. something bulky at the top, like the top of his bicep. Yeah, but I could, could be wrong. It could, it's probably just got some sort of compression thing that, you gotcha. know, 10 or 15 millimeters thick or something like that. So but. you run and get your notes. So the good for me, there was a lot yeah, of go good. Right there. It's not that far away. <laughs> Take a nap on the way. Um, there, the good for me was uh, I was very, very elated and excited to see the run defense step up. Now, keeping in mind that they gave up an 81 yard play, uh, 81 rushing yards on one play, by and large, they bottled up Dalvin Cook, who is a top five running back in the NFL. I thought yeah. I thought the run game was fantastic. They figured it out. They shorted it up against a good running team. Um, you know, Justin Jefferson somehow had 193 or 189 yards receiving that game. One of them was for 40 yards. There was obviously the other one for 30 yards, but it didn't seem like Justin Jefferson was the problem, right? Mm-hmm. Justin had a lot of those yards, and the Bills were up by three scores. They were up by 17 points, and then it turned into – us standing in the in the suite going, he's just going to throw it to Justin Jefferson at the end of the game. And every time he just did, and Justin Jefferson just kept coming down with the football. There was a stat I heard today that Justin Jefferson, I think of the passes he caught, it was like nine, 80 or 90% of them were 50-50 balls. Like his probability of catching was 50%, and he caught almost every single one of them, which, which is just otherworldly. But I thought the defense early played well against the run. I thought they played well against the yeah. pass. Uh, yeah. They pushed – Kirk into some mistakes defensively or offensively. I thought that was good. Obviously, it unraveled. I thought jo- uh, Josh, as was just stated, did look comfortable early. I thought he kind of looked back to himself. I was in the booth yelling third and Josh because we were back to the it's third and 12 or third and 16. Josh drops back and does what Josh does. Like he chucks the ball 16 yards on the field, first down. There's a lot of good grabs or a lot of plays that were being made. There's a lot of good. Most of it in the first half, the second half, it was just, it wasn't a comedy of errors, but it was just a mistake was made and then it wasn't picked up. And then a mistake was made and it wasn't picked up. And then a mistake was made and it wasn't picked up. It was just one of those things. But uh, overall, the game itself, you know, it was entertaining. And I get 
why it was being heralded even in the at the end of the game by the broadcast announcer this is the game of the year like people were freaking out about what a great game it was for the average spectator probably so for us not so much that game ends not differently so it, it probably is but the way that it ended i dude i was in shock i it had the fumble the, this isn't good but the fumble in the end zone on the on the on the push at the very end of the game was in my end zone like literally yeah, yeah. we're sitting on top of that play and I'm just like, what happened? Like the, the referee's yeah. signaling touchdown. And I'm like, and I'm just like in disbelief. I'm like, what happened? Well, we were talking about the good and you transferred to that. And I, <laughs> I, I actually was like, I was in the, I was doing a, a hard reset on my brain to hope to forget that play. But that's, <laughs> that's 100% on Josh. For that sure. is, For it sure. is, centers snap the ball. If you're a quarterback, you need to understand is my yeah. center snapping and going to my left or to my right? And then you ride them a little bit to compensate. And that was curious. However, however, I'm sitting there with my great friends from Niagara Falls who are vacationing in Tucson, Frank Thomas Croisdale and Maureen and his daughter and, and their friend. And mm -hmm. I said to myself, I would not sneak it here. I would I roll know. out and throw it away. Or I would roll out and hit a shorty. Mm. I would do something. I don't like handing it off because that's a little bit scary. Let's come back to that. Let's do the good plays, right? And then we'll come back to that in the bad. Well, well you do... you transitioned I know, to that. I didn't do. It was an accident. Whose show is this? It's yours, but I want to keep it. We're already running a little bit long in the tooth, for lack of oh, a way of saying okay, it. Okay, okay, go. So we're gonna we are going to break down a couple plays uh for you guys. And the first one is actually they're all three Devin Singletary plays, but the first good play is this one. Uh, which is uh, the very first big run by Devin Singletary. So I don't know if you want to talk about the formation on the lineup or what. Yeah, so mostly what I'm talking about here is what I've been talking about for weeks now. Devin Singletary is a little guy, and he comes from a school where it's wide open sets. And when you start cramping up the formation with more tight ends and then guys in the uh, – you know, the kind of wing formation mm -hmm. or you get that teacup formation. You're just bringing too many people in. This right. clears the field for him. And what we're doing is we're kind of running zone to the left. We're pulling the tackle and we're giving Devin a chance to really see the defensive front, which in this case only consists of seven, six guys. Mm -hmm. So we're making it easy for him to read. So go ahead and run it. We, we do have a, a poor block by uh, Saffold. But the nice thing about this is you get a great block from Dawkins and Singletary reads it, right? So this is normally supposed to be a kickout block by Dawkins, but because the defensive end wrong arms it, Dawkins wraps it and he makes a bounce. It's mm. it's just nice. And now you got horrible Harry out in space. Yep. And <laughs> yep. And, 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 and then he does and it. And he makes single, and oh, he yeah. Goes. And look at him in the open field. I mean, this guy, if we can get him free, making people miss a phone booth. He get, I hate saying cut on a dime, but dear God, he yeah. just made three guys miss two and a half, really. Yep. So here's the other, the other, the other angle. So where? Yeah, I love it. So so Saffold, Saffold, so Saffold is out there in space by himself, right? No, so Sa Saffold's got to block the three technique, and he whiffs. He whiffs on horrible Harry. So he Harry, whiffs. Harry could totally just sidesteps him. He's like, whoop, nice. Well, him. yeah, but it's 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 nothing to do with Harry and everything to do with Saffold. But what Saffold. He could have just, when you miss like that, the worst thing you can do is look backwards. He should have helped on the double team two frames ago. Right. And then go back a little bit. When I talk about kicking out or wrapping, the one more frame back. You see, when Dawkins is coming toward the defensive end here, I don't know who it is. Yep. If that guy comes up field toward Josh, he kicks him out. But what he does here is he kind of sits and what we say is wrong arm it, where he's going to take his left shoulder and kind of drive into the block. But and the thing that he's trying to do is compress the hole between Morse and Dawkins. Mm -hmm. But because Singletary has that ability to cut off of it, he sees the defensive end wrong arm it, so he bounces. Yeah, it's and beautiful. The, and the good news is, is here is it's basically hat on hat on, and then Shakir is going for the safety, mm -hmm. and then all Singletary has to do is make the one guy miss, which he always does, right? Mm -hmm. And there it is. And God, Spencer Gr Brown is so good in space, and he had those two stupid and awful holding penalties. Yeah. Oh, and he. Yeah, and I got to give him a dude award, dude. Come on. For for the bad penalty. Oh, two of them. He got yeah. two holds. 
yeah for sure so that's the first one so uh that was there was a lot of good stuff there but uh a little bit of bad stuff too but nothing major the second one is the very next oh, okay one. so so you brought up something that's really cool but just by saying that when you run from these very simple sets like the one you have on the screen mm -hmm. and you're giving the ball to a guy at six or seven or eight yards he has the ability to save the ass of a guy who gets either gets beat mm -hmm. or gets olayed or makes a mental error but when you compress and you bring nine guys or eight guys deep into the box, there is less room for error by, well, everybody. And we've right. seen right. enough error from receivers on blocking, from tight ends on blocking. So run it. Yeah, run it. Why not? I don't even know what it is. You made this up. Play. Yeah. So this is just pretty simple, right? I mean, if you go back, what we're doing is we're bringing Gabe Davis in motion. And if everybody wants to know why we're doing it, it's he's because he's, he's outflanked by the slot DB. Mm -hmm. So you bring him into motion so he has an angle to play on white. I think his name is number 23. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of this play is Quentin Morris. He makes this play go. It's just a simple zone left. Everybody's stepping left. We get a hat on a hat. We want to make that combination get blocked, get to the second level. But watch Morris right here. Hands inside, and he has a chance to really kind of rework his body into the man. Right there, he's got him extended. And now Singletary's gone. You can't recover from that. Yep. He's, he's, he's one and a half and one and a half. He's one and a half yards out. And he's one and a half yards close to you. He's going by. Yep, 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 indeed. So that's uh, that's that one. And then the last one is uh, Devin Singletary as well. I don't remember the exact situation, but you sent this to me. I What's the down one. and distance? I can't see it. Uh, I actually trapped. Right, it's out of the screen. So uh, da, 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 let's just roll through here real quick. Yeah, again, simplicity of formation so what were they doing in the second half were they were they doing were they lining up differently was the formations different in the second half and if they were what they, is the reason? They, they, they called three draw plays on third and short what's the I mean, reason for that i mean you guys lived bread and butter for thurman thomas and jim kelly and your offensive line was the draw that, that, yeah. that delayed like reach around draw right yeah, but that but that that was us and we right. practiced we practiced it you know five times a day Right, right. And and there there is a lot you you know, I don't want to get too like uh you know ethereal or anything, but you know, there's a lot of feel to these plays. And you know, you're pass protecting, but you want the guy to beat you, but in such a way that you control him, that you guide him uh, on a draw play. Right now we're going forward. Stop the film. Mm -hmm. We look, we got four of our five offensive linemen on the line or beyond. I don't know what Spencer Brown's doing, but he's chasing his block <laughs> yeah he's chasing his block but he he makes good contact yeah he should he should have gone for the inside shoulder but look look at how collapsed it is right on the yep. on the top of the screen yeah simplicity of formation bodies moving forward i think that's our identity as a run group and when we get away from that when we start pulling two offensive linemen we got to do two block down blocks and we don't practice that enough, and you never practice it live, it, it's not a good recipe. Right, right. So those those are the good plays. And I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I could very well be wrong because we did not talk about this beforehand and I've never studied it. The, the genius behind a draw or a delay is the idea, the concept that like the, the rushers are going to pin their ear, ears back. And then basically you wait, get the ball, and run by them as they're not even paying attention to you, which is something that in this offense could work. Because we're such a pass-heavy offense, so the question is: is why don't they hone in on that some more? Because that's what did that's what worked for you guys was the fact that it was a pass-heavy offense. Everybody knew that Jim was going to throw the ball if he had the chance. So let's catch you trying to get Jim, and that's what they did. Yeah, look, I, I don't disagree with that, but that goes back to philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. What's your philosophy? Now I'll say this: we still don't have one. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to run the draw when Harrison. Phillips is in the game. Right. He's not rushing the passer. Right. You know, I, I don't think I don't think he want to do it when Jordan Phillips is in the game either. I mean, right. he's not you, when Ed Oliver's in the game. Yes. When Boogie Basham is playing the three technique. Yes. So you you run a lot when you run the draw, you're relying on a very, very traditional rush mm -hmm. coming upfield with two guys that want to meet at the quarterback at eight yards deep. 
and a couple of defensive tackles who uh, Cole Pepper and uh, what's his name from Tampa Bay legend, Hall of Famer, uh, proposition to girl in the elevator got oh, arrested. Snap. Warren, Warren Sapp, Sapp yeah, right? Sapp, yep. Sorry, Warren, I didn't want to bring that up. But I... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I knew I knew you'd know it. I knew you'd know it. Um, so you have to have the right personnel, and then and then you better hope they're not gaming. You hope they're not doing a right. you know a TE twist. stunt because if they're stunt, yeah. an ET, you're not you're going to be okay. But a TE, you're in real trouble. Right. So right. you know you, and there's too many variables. I think before we jump over to the not so good, the needs work. Um, mm-hmm. You know what is is really good is barbecue mm-hmm. sauce, and, and, bar- and, and, and boy, do we have a barbecue sauce for the folks oh. here on our show to talk about. Yeah, and Q42. Honestly, I cook for like. 20 people at a time i need the gallon size uh jug right so hey i'm feeling fresh this monday night you should know what's in your barbecue rub you should be knowledgeable q42's texas brisket coffee rub Mm. texas brisket coffee rub which i am going to use tonight (laughs) is made of coarse black pepper salt garlic onion paprika cayenne he's giving away the recipe and tim horton's (laughs) coffee no preservatives it's really tim horton's coffee wow no fillers put it on burgers steak beef ribs and of course brisket mm. with some heat and smoke you'll get a beautiful bark while the coffee delivers an earthy flavor it's also john fina and jerry ostrowski approved and i said that because i'll tell you in a second go to q42barbecue.com hulk smash that fina show all caps coupon code and save 30% on your order at Thanksgiving's coming and Christmas and oh my god stocking stuffers who wouldn't love Q42 in their stocking dope love it hint hint and uh I told you I'd surprise you I am going to check out right now and start the Coles I'll be right back because I am using <laughs> the coffee rub tonight we have a super chat you can't I'll be right back <laughs> oh my gosh this guy he, he's spending more time off the show than he is spending on the show right now but uh no the, the Q42 stuff just so in case anybody's wondering where the name even comes from so so Buffalo is on the 42nd parallel uh which is kind of a cool way to get your name so Q42 uh from Buffalo obviously they're Buffalo Bills fans and and uh, we appreciate Iman and everything that he does, not only for us, but for the Mafia as well on Sundays when we are tailgating. So do yourselves a favor. Jump over to uh, q42.bbq.com uh, and uh, type in Fina Show. Get yourself. It says 15% right there, but it's actually 30% for a limited time. But, uh, yeah, Should are you out of breath now? You out of breath? Yeah. <laughs> How long was that? It was like 45 seconds. It was like forever. Tracy has a super chat. She wants to know what they do when a player loses confidence in himself. Is there a protocol? Well, in the days past, you know, you just cut it up in the locker room, slap them around a little bit, lift them up. Uh, nowadays, I'm sure it's therapy dog. And <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're a kinder, gentler universe. But yeah, I think a lot of that, you know, really falls on the quarterback room and the coach the head coach and dorsey yeah and then you know you run a balance in the locker room of acknowledging it and addressing it versus ignoring it Mm -hmm. right like you don't want to make somebody get more and more inside their own head right right and um you know i have the i have conversations with my boys about this too i mean it's a it can happen at any position this you know and when you're playing left tackle or if you're playing cornerback and you're having a little bit of, you know, confidence issues, you're not going to break on, on the, on the ball, or you're not going to get your head around, or you're going to second guess your set, right? You're, yeah. you know, I went through a little phase there where I was, you know, kind of tentative about striking, which brings me to Spencer Brown. He's rusty. Mm. He needs to stop holding because mm. it killed us. Mm. I mean, they, they're killers. Uh, and I think we overcame one of them and one we did not. But psychologically, it's like you know, the punt return that goes for 45 yards. I never celebrated a punt return until I looked back and saw no no yellow on the field. Right, right. So how, I think that's part of the work, right? Josh has to work on his confidence and realize that 
there's an ebb and flow to it, but he needs to have a stability within himself that transcends the accolades and the excitement, you know, a, a humility that I, I know that he has, but it, it really has to come into play when the, when the moments are darkest and yeah. guess what? We're here. Yeah. Uh, what else needs work? They need, need to limit, really, they need to limit the mistakes. Clearly yeah. Josh is needing to limit the mistakes. You know, you, you touched on mm-hmm. bad penalties at bad times and there were several of them in that football game yesterday. Um, you know, play calling to me is somewhat of an issue as far as, you know, go ahead. let's stay on that play calling. Right. Yep. So I want to see Dorsey understanding what the defense does in the first half and make minor modifications in the second half that only elaborate and build on the current game plan. Right. However, why an entirely new running philosophy in the second half? that that's baffling dorsey needs work he and it's funny because most people think about players watching film coaches watch film Mm -hmm. and good leaders like mcdermott are going to say how do you grade yourself it's not just players who come out of a game with a grade it's coaches for sure and i gotta tell you you know and mcdermott i don't he probably won't publicly admit it but he's probably looking back saying why did i give the go to to going for it on fourth and two maybe maybe he fell to the pressure of dorsey and everybody saying go for it or maybe he did it unilaterally but he's got to be sitting there going let me look at at the situational awareness of the game why would i make that decision again yeah i think if it's seven if you're still up three possessions you go for it right you, you, it's it, it's just a, it's it's tough it's a hard situation to be in it's a hard position to be in and it's always about hindsight is 2020 and rethinking it mm-hmm. the problem is is i don't want the bills to be in a situation where they you know he's hesitant later especially if the offense is hot i think that's part of the conversation was the offense hot enough to press there and i don't know that they were and then no they weren't and and you you fold in and i'm interrupting you because it's my show you <laughs> fold in the fact that josh was coming off of a very uh self-incriminating performance the week mm-hmm. before so you should be putting him in situations where there's no fail right and and whether it was the fourth and two or the interception game ending play he should have been thinking, I don't need to go for it. I, he's not as open as he should be. Right. I clutched it or I pumped it. Now I just need to run it. Right. Uh, and Josh, he, I can see some things too where he's he's dropping too deep now a little bit on his full depth. By the way, play action is beautiful because you only drop to six. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he's vacating the pocket sometimes when he doesn't need to. I think he enjoys throwing on the run, so I wouldn't try right. to correct that. But w- if a guy is struggling a little bit with his confidence, you should you should call plays to his strength. Mm-hmm. So let's take a look at the uh, the the draw play that you've talked about so much on this show, mm-hmm. real quick. Well, as far as for for me, play. this is just all about down and distance. I mean, it's Think about it as a defend as a defender, as a philosophy, mm-hmm. right? So it's third and two. I'm the second level linebackers. I don't even have to move, right? Because I just need to protect for the first down throw. Because they need a they need two yards. So I, there's no way I'm gonna drop three yards. So you you touch on a good point that I didn't think about even when we talked about this play. Draw plays typically happen third and 14, third and 18. Fans third like, and six, third and seven. Fans like myself generally call it a give up play. We don't have a pass play. Not Bills fans now because we have a quarterback, third and Josh. They can throw the ball 18 yards on the field and hit an open receiver. Generally speaking, most teams don't have that play. So if it's third and 12, third and 14, they run a draw play because there's space, right? And then you hope for a missed tackle or two, and you get lucky. If not, you at least get seven, eight yards, try to flip the field position. But third and two, this legitimately, with all those people on the line and the linebackers up, makes zero sense. Let's make, let, it, let's it, stop and pause <laughs> and then hand the ball off. Well, and again, and again, they're in nickel, right? Uh, we have we have six to block six. They right. don't have seven in the box. Right. The math works for us right here. Oh, now you're getting me all angry. 
I'm Watch the gonna... linebackers. Look at the linebacker creeping at the bottom. He's already <laughs> creeped. He's he's at the first down marker. I mean, uh, it's a disaster. Who's going to no, rush on third and two? No gain. Like, no gain. No like, gain. Zero gain. Uh, yeah, it's just, I, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just not great. We have another super chat from uh, uh, Doc Dog Seven Seven, and he just asks where where are the Josh sweeps. So J- Josh is injured, right? So they're not, they're not, they weren't going to put him at risk in this game. Um, there was the one play, the interception he had where he made the tackle and laid on the turf for a while. And I don't, we don't know at this point if he was on the ground pissed at himself or not pissing himself, pissed off at himself, or if, was, yeah, or, or if he was laying on the ground because he was potentially injured, tweaked the elbow, whatever, we don't know. But they're, they're just not going to put him at yeah. risk. This is So, the so here, here's the beauty of Josh Allen. If you look at that draw play again, you don't, don't go back to it, but okay. in your mind, because I've already committed it to memory, that's a perfect, perfect opportunity to run whatever you want to call it, Josh Sweep. You can pull a guard. Right. I love – the single tight end power with one guard. And now, although Devin Singletary might be better replaced by, um, you know, Hines or or Cook to lead block through the hole, just, um, you know, that's a better play than a draw. Right. This is the uh, the James Cook no gain play. Mm -hmm. All right. So what you have here is really just, unfortunate job by Deion Dawkins and everybody else. (laughs) No, no, no. What happens is that stop it right there. Oh, Uh, I'll go back. I'll go back. This play is really supposed to hit up inside of Saffold and you see Bates right there going for the cut. But what happens is you can see Deion Dawkins numbers and if, and that's bad. So he misses his down block, right? Go back to the uh, snap. Gotcha. Oops. Right. Are they in regular or are they in nickel? Where are they? There it is. All right. So they're in nickel, right? Yep. Again, they're in nickel. We got two guys in the backfield. Naheem Hines is the other one. Right. I mean, this should be a no-brainer. Let's run zone. Run Naheem Hines out to the out to the flat to the left and just so run zone to the right. I mean, give them a cutback. But what we're doing here is we're adding too much. We got horrible Harry, who is just chomping at the bit to show up his Buffalo Bills, going against the guys that he fought against, right? I mm-hmm. just don't love it. I don't mm-hmm. love it. So you miss a down block. You get driven at the center position a little – not the center position, I'm sorry. The uh, um, uh, Saffold ends up with – not Saffold. I can't even – all I'm saying is you're adding too many angles. You're adding too much complication. And if I can't describe it easily, that's a problem <laughs> for our running game, right? What have I said? Simple formations, simple plays. Right. Two guys pin and pull. There's too many things that can happen. Linebackers come downhill on the guys that are pulling, and the guys that are blocking down have to deal with a guy who could either be penetrating or reading. It's just, right. it's just not smart for our philosophy. Now – that's not to say other teams can't do it well, but we don't. Now I'm getting angry. You are angry. So this is the last one that we got as far as uh, just stuff that needs work. Uh, and this is the uh, Dalvin Cook relatively decent run. You wanted to talk about the defensive line here, I think, just a little bit. But not great, Bob. No, I mean, you know, we, we have a lot of penetration going on. That's kind of the hallmark of what we want to do as a front four but we just have to make sure that when we're pressing, guys aren't choosing. So I think what you have here is you have um, – you're getting a little bit of lack of reaction from the linebackers. I hate to say it. you know. And they, they, did, they did what we want to do to everybody else. We're a nickel. It's a base set. We put a body on a body, and we're reading. Right. We're, we got to have a guy make a play. And this goes back to what you said before. We need to make plays and we're just, we're not making plays. We got to beat guys man to man. And this is part of the game and we're not seeing it. I mean, it was a great effort there. I don't know if it's Phillips or Daquan, but you know what? We're, we're missing a little bit of a, kind of like the Superman stuff we used to see from some of the nineties defenders, right? When things, you know, things weren't looking good. All of a sudden, Daryl Talley or Bruce Smith or Phil Hansen would make some ridiculously cool tackle when it was the most unlikely of situations. Right. We're, for sure. we're not, we're not getting it. 
Right, for sure. So, uh, yeah, so the next thing that we're going to talk about, let's just put this game to bed. Uh, and I'm we, we're a little bit long, but uh, our next expectations and the next game that we have is the Cleveland Browns. And I'm going to be honest with you. My first expectation is, I think, as much as we're facing probably the number one running back in the NFL, not named Jonathan Taylor or Saquon Barkley. Nick uh, uh, Chubb is that guy, right? Um, Nick Chubb. I'm somewhat confident that the Bills can do what they need to do defensively against him to kind of, you know, you're gonna they're gonna they're gonna sell out to Chubb and make Jacoby Brissett beat them, right? I mean that's that's gonna be the plan for this football game. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but you know you end up in a numbers game if they can scheme us like uh, Minnesota did on the 80 yard touchdown run. It only takes one, right? So if we're a nickel and they're scheming us with their basically regular package, can we not start that? If you tell if they if they if they do not roll out a traditional four three in this football game, I might I might turn it off at this like in the first quarter. All right, well you got Tremaine Edmonds who's likely going to be out. So who are your linebackers? Tyrell Dotson, Matt Milano, and uh, the new kid Bernard. All right. And which one of those guys? How are two of them Phil guys, or one is a Phil guy? Well, the interesting part about those though the, the names I just named, the guy they want is Bernard. They want him to be kind of like the next Tremaine Edmonds, which he did not. No, do but well. he's not. A, but he's not a Phil guy. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Well, hang on. A I was finishing my thought though. Like he hasn't played up to expectations. Balen Specter is a guy that in preseason played his way onto this football team. He was expected to not make the team. Um, and I don't even know that we've seen him on the field. If I, I could be wrong, he might not even be on the on the team anymore. I, I may have missed it, but in my opinion, you've got the horses you need, right? So, what have we heard since the beginning that Matt Milano and T Tremaine Edmonds are interchangeable as it pertains to execution? Now, Tremaine Edmonds is the quarterback; he calls the plays, he puts guys in position, put Bernard on the field. But if you've got a, if Tremaine can't play, why not move Milano inside, right, and kind of like live in that Tremaine space. I don't know. I, you know, more. No, about no, no. I, I think you got it sideways, upside down and backwards. I think Dodson's got to be the guy in the middle because he's the Phil guy. Do you know what I mean when I say Phil? Well, yes, but like Brian Bauer says, you don't want Bernard in over Taron Johnson. That's absolutely not true. Every time we've played a solid, good running back, Jonathan Taylor last year, we kept Taron Johnson in there because we want that nickel guy because we're so much, you don't need to play a base nickel against Jacoby Brissett. You stop well, the run. I, I think what's curious is if you're coming up against a run team and you're not running regular defense on first and 10, whatever their tendencies are, mm -hmm. then that is a curious decision to make. All right. So explain the Phil, the Phil linebacker piece then. When I say Phil, I don't mean a guy filling in. I mean a guy filling the hole. Right. Yes. That's, I, I do that. Oh, too. okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I think Dodson's your guy for sure to, to fight through traffic between the guards. And I think Bernard is probably your space guy with Mil with Milano being um, the boundary guy. Right. So I think we're saying the same thing. But if we again, I mean, if we we need to stop this running back who is a terrific football player, and I hate it when I say that because what else does he play? He's a terrific <laughs> tennis player, and his he might bad be. his badminton game is unbelievable. We got to stop the the fly from getting over us right so what are you what are you expecting from this football team against the browns this weekend all right defensively i do expect a stouter running defense right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think uh the coaching for the safeties we're going to be a little bit more aggressive in the passing game coming downhill challenging those those catches from you know 12 yards to 22 yard depth right frankly all right offensively i think that I mean, I saw it, and I only watched the film twice. We need to line up in a simple formation, throw on first down, run on second down when they're in nickel, and do what we do best, which is go forward. And literally, we need to find a way to expose the middle of the field a little bit better mm. uh, with the passing game. And we're missing that reliable slot guy that sits down and finds the open area. And we got it. We got to get it. Yeah. So Brian Bowers uh, follows up just a comment that the defensive tackle, defensive tackles have to play better. Yeah, no kidding. The mm -hmm. problem is, is yeah. you can't just be like, hey, we're going to roll Taron Johnson out here. You guys got to play better. They no, have, I, they but, he, <laughs> but he's right. I mean, you know, what I've seen is it's a little too much feast or famine to uh, Brian's point. And I love the point that he brought up. And I'm, I'm loathe to be hypercritical of that position because it is, 
I oh god, uh, after linebacker, that's the last position I would impl- I would ever play defensive tackle. What a torturous, murderous, crappy place to live. Um, I just I just don't agree with but, the the but, looking at the defensive tackles and saying you guys got to play better. If, if no, but, but he's right. If, wishes but he's, and whatever were something. But he's, but he's like, right. The, the consistency. <laughs> I think what he's talking about is the consistency. But they're not. So you don't roll Taron Johnson out there. You put an extra linebacker out there. I, your I don't disagree with you, but but it. they but I'm talking about. I think what we're talking about is technique, functionality, disengaging, and sure. gap gap integrity. Sure. So those things, you know, need if, to get if, if we go back to the Jets game, the joke that I made and you caught right onto it was DeMar Hamlin just tackled the Jets running back again, 20 yards down the field mm-hmm. because yeah. the defensive tackles weren't doing anything and then neither were the linebackers. They were just running right through us. I just don't – I don't know that there's a world where it's like all of a sudden nine game, ten, at the 10th game, you've finally gotten through to them and they're going to get it this game. So we get to play the nickel 4-2. Against a, uh, against a run first team like the Colts, in a somebody else asked the question, "What's the weather going to be like?" Right? Will weather play a factor? It's going to be twenty nine degrees and windy. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen in that football game? Well, listen, the part of the problem is you can't coach like your quarterback is going to win every damn game. You can't have an offensive running game philosophy that relies on number 17 to win every damn game you know whether he's it's a slump because it's a slump or your underwear's on backwards or whatever the hell it is everybody ebbs and flows yes and we need to we need to pick it up on the defensive side of the ball the coaching the play calling i don't really want to say coaching i I think the play calling was just uh uh vexing in the second half i was vexed (laughs) <laughs> very vexed the thing about the weather as well is this isn't the falcons coming in here or the dolphins cleveland is two and a half hours down the street their weather mm-hmm. is exactly the same as ours so mm-hmm. they're going to be just as used to it or suffer just as much as we're going to suffer that's like the great misnomer as it pertains to buffalo weather is like we get accused of siberia and horrible weather and snow and cleveland has the exact same weather we have but that's a conversation for a different day. So we need to wrap this thing up. It's yeah, been a great, do. it's been a yeah, fun show. It, this, this show is, has been a thousand times better than last week where there was no good to talk about. Mm. There was two plays, there were two mm. good plays and that was it. So this has been a fun, I hope cathartic for you. This is round two for me. Oh. <laughs> I hope you have found Zen. My chi, <laughs> my center. Look at look at how flexible my wrists still are. That's impressive. That's it, why people think I can play. Look at my wrist flexibility. It's 61 years old. That's super impressive. Oh my <laughs> god, I only look 61. John, before I close this out, any final thoughts? Yeah, um clean it up on Twitter. Don't call players out. Don't mm. call it out except in a constructive kind of way. Mm. You can see I can criticize players, but I still root for them. I'm not saying they they lost the whole damn thing or they, you know, it was a team effort and a loss. It's a team effort and a win. Be kind to your team because they've embraced your community. Mm. They love you. You love them back. Don't run away at the first sign of adversity. Yeah. You know, advocate for your team, stick together as a fan base. Don't take bloody bite-sized chunks out of each other. There is no upside in that. Super good, super good. Uh, so coming up right after this show is a new program to Buffalo Rumblings, which is Buffalo Late Night, hosted by Thomas DeLoss. Uh, Jenna Cottrell is going to be on their first episode on Rumblings and me. So stick around. Uh, if you are not doing anything or you've got some time to kill or you want to turn the, the the volume down on the football game, which I've done here, and you watch it and listen to us. But uh, coming up right after this at 930, Buffalo Late Night uh, with Thomas DeLoss uh, is coming up right after this. Uh, tomorrow night, Code of Conduct. Wednesday night, Humpty Hotline. Thursday night, Buffalo Nerd. And then Three Men Rush with Jerry Ostrowski, your former teammate. And then uh, Friday is Food for Thought. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been tuned into the Off Tackle with John Fina Show, brought to you by the Market Dominator team on the Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network. My name is Joe Miller. That over there is John Fina. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Can't wait to talk to you next week. Look for a reschedule with Drew Bledsoe. We're working on a bunch of other guests as well. Uh, Soon. 
even if it happens in the off season, we'll get some guests on here that you guys want to listen to, right? And, and worst case scenario, you just get us again. <laughs> <laughs> I think judging by the comments, I think that's okay with people. I think they kind yeah. of they possibly they yeah. enjoy at least you. I don't, you know, but uh, you know, you are a pretty attractive man. We but, love uh, them back. We, we love, love them, them back. back. Uh, final thoughts. Here we go. No, I, you're, I, you already gave it. I'm good. I know. Let's so, go. I have let's none. Go. So, uh, let's go. So, so you want to get out of here? Well, then let's just do a go Bills and get out of here. Go Bills. A dove, Kate. Go Bills. Go Bills.